New weight music, guys. We, we got some new weight music here. I mean, this thing is really coming together. What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Power Hour. We're going to be talking some hot stocks today. We, we, we've got some trades that we're putting on. Let's jump straight into it with, with what we're going to be covering today. All right. Uh, we're going to be getting into Tesla. Uh, we're going to do Nikola, ARCT, Baba, Palantir, and Fubo. So, yes, we have a lot of hot tickers. Guys, if you're in the chat, and again, the, the, the main chat where Zinger Nation is communicating, where we're all hanging out, is on the YouTube chat. So, go ahead. If you're, if you're watching on Twitter, you're watching on Facebook, you want to participate with the community, search Benzinga YouTube and, and hop into that chat. I'm also going to give you guys a preview of some new tools that we're building at uh, or on Benzinga.com. So, so, we'll do a quick sneak peek there. would love to get any sort of feedback from you guys on that. Um... And go ahead, in the chat, drop in any other tickers you want us to cover today. So, so, so if you've got names that you're looking at, I already see Apple up there. I see iPoc up there. Uh, if you have any tickers you, you want us to talk about, you want us to cover today, go ahead, drop those into the chat. Um, and last but not least, go ahead and, and hit that like button for us. Um, <clears throat> once again, Jason is still caught up at the dentist. I don't know what type of dental work he's having done, but it's been almost two weeks that he's been at the dentist. So, so, so I, I'm here with with my trusty sidekick, Drew, Pro producer Aaron. Can we bring Drew onto the stream? There he is. How are we doing, guys? I'm so excited to see Jason's teeth after two weeks at the dentist. I heard he might be getting a new grill or something. So I'm looking forward to that. Sad horns on that one. Um. But cool, guys. Keep 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 those tickers coming. AJ saying he's getting dentures. Yes, I think he's probably getting dentures. Um, you know, he's he's getting up there. I said grills, Luke. Yeah, grills, dentures. I mean, what? I mean, ideally both, right? He, he gets some false teeth. He doesn't, you know, need need to worry about brushing as much. He just pops them out, drops them in that cup of water. Um, you know, he gets some grills. He's got, you know, some 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 gold on there. I, I think that that would be popular. All right, Drew, let, let, let's kick it off. We're, we're getting some tickers in the chat. Drew, I'm counting on you to, to grab those tickers down um, and, and, and throw out the uh, uh, th throw them out to us so we can cover them on the show. Um, but, but first thing I want to start with, I like to start this way. It, it gets me rolling with our disaster of the day. Let's do it. <laughs> Look at that. We even have a new graphic, a new disaster of the day graphic. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen here. Check this one out. All right. There we go. I've got it up. Now let's get it onto the stream here. ARCT Arc Arcturus Therapeutics. I think that's the name. But but here's the point that I want to make. This is the point that I've been making for the past week. And, and every single day for the past week, you guys have been fighting against me, but it's been proven right and right and right and right and right, which is do not buy these small biotech stocks. I think that you can go ahead and trade them just like you can go ahead and trade anything. But but when you're buying these small biotech, these pre-revenue stocks, these, these pre-drug stocks, you're literally just waiting on a binary event, right? Your, their drug is either going to do well in trials and get approved where the stock price is going to double or, or it's going to fail in trials and, and the, the company is more or less going to just return capital to shareholders. The stock price is going to fall 50 to 100 percent. Right. That, that's the deal with these small biotech stocks. I've been making this case over and over and over again. Right. I, I always like to trade when I have some sort of thesis, some competitive advantage. I have valuation to back me up. Uh, it, it is, I think, literally just a crapshoot. Unless you work in this field and, and you have some sort of insight or, or you really understand what the company is trying to solve. It is so tough to get these right. Uh, our, our disaster of the day yesterday, the day before. So now we're going three days in a row. The, the, the losingest stock has been these small biotechs. Uh, this one today, ARCT. Yeah, Christian Gallagher saying the disaster day is always a biotech. It is, because I'm trying to make this point. I, I made that point uh, uh, for the first time a couple weeks ago, and then Jason went and bought, like, four of them. <laughs> four free revenue stocks to say an F you. <laughs> All right, so, so, so there is our disaster of the day. Um, Drew, do, do you have any uh, uh, tickers out of the chat that we should hop into, or, or, or is it time to do some Nikola? 
we definitely have some tickers. One question I was going to ask you, Luke, is a lot of these traders, you know, some of them might be new, some of them might be experienced, but what would you classify as a small cap um, or small biotech stock? So that stock had a market cap of $1.6 billion. That's a lot of money, Luke. Is that considered small? Is it the pre-revenue that you're looking for? What is that main factor that says, I shouldn't trade this? I'm All hot right, stocks, well, Luke. Get, 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 can you put my screen back on, producer Aaron? All right, it's the revenue. Check this out. So, so, so this stock, right? It has a 1.1 billion dollar market cap. Look at their quarterly revenue. Can, you, can you, let me let me throw another zoom on here, right? The the, the company's doing 2.3 million dollars of revenue. That that that's nothing, right? That that's what I'm watching. More than market cap is the revenue, right? If they have diversified revenue streams, um, if they have multiple drugs on the market, like a Pfizer. Right, that, that, then there's no concern. Pfizer misses a trial, nobody gives a shit. Right, the, the stock's gonna fall three percent, and it's back up two months later. Right, um, but but it's any of these cases where you're waiting on a pivotal event. Right, investors are probably banking on, you know, they're gonna get this drug approved. It's gonna do five hundred million dollars a year for them. That one point one billion dollar market cap goes to two billion dollars. Right, that that that's what you're waiting on. And, and and those are the ones that I have the problem with and stay out of. And and, and let let me let me tell you guys this insight too. Right. Because we talk to a lot of hedge funds here and, and have, have decent insight how as to how institutions pick stocks. There, there, there are a couple hedge funds. All that they do is they specialize in these these biotech stocks and they actually recreate the trials. But believe it or not, right? They, they, they recreate the studies to, to get data, to get an idea as to whether or not this thing is going to get through the FDA, right? That, that's who you're going head to head with. And, and I think it's so tough as a consumer, as an individual trader, to, to, to out-compete that. Again, if, if you work in the field or, or you have some reason why, why you're, you're really familiar with the treatment or, or, or the disease that they're targeting, then great. But, but for the most part, I think that these things are so freaking tough. So, so how, how is that for, for the answer to your question, Drew? That was perfect, Luke. That's exactly uh, what I wanted to learn. Thanks for sharing that with me. For sure. All right, throw throw us some tickers out of the chat. Let's do it. It's 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 time for some ticker time. That's what that's what we're gonna start calling it. Ticker time. All right. I've seen a lot of some of my favorite tickers. I know I told a few of my buddies to join the chat, and they're they're throwing out good tickers. So first one we gotta talk about. I'm a big fan of them. Um, I, I love lemonade. You know, growing up, I love to drink lemonade, and now the stock um, is pretty good too. Ticker symbol uh, L M N D. Uh, right, it's an I've got insurance it on company. This this is like a, a new age uh, insurance company. This is like 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 the fintech. This is like the I don't know what's a good analogy. This is like the Tesla of cars for insurance. How's that, Drew? We can't hear you. Pro well, I'm a first time renter, and I'm right, using so, lemonade. Wait, wait, so, no, start over. Start over. We we lost you. All Again. right. <laughs> So I was clicking through tabs, got a little lost, so I didn't mean to cut you off, but I'm a millennial, I'm a first time renter, and I use lemonade for insurance. I had to get apartment insurance, I didn't really know what to do. I didn't want to go to some, you know, insurance agency and you know, work through all that. I download an app, I pay nine dollars a month. You know, is it doing anything? I don't really know. I haven't I haven't used that insurance, but I'm paying ten dollars a month, all my roommates are. Um, it's pretty simple to use, it's easy, they're it's very friendly. Uh, I think it's the future of insurance. All right, so 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 let let let's look at some of the numbers on this thing. So so the stock's got a three billion dollar market cap. Let's see where the sales are at, because I guess that it's not a lot. All right, so so trailing four quarter revenue. So you had eighteen. Let's see, eighteen plus thirty plus twenty six plus twenty four. All right, so they're putting up one hundred and twenty eight million of revenue, three billion dollar market cap. So so that's what. 20-ish times. Let's see how close I estimated that. All right, 20, 22 times, 20, 23 times, something like that. Um, so, so you like the company or you like the stock? So I like the company, right? I think like you're saying, like, right? It's not the best multiples. It's not like something that Warren Buffett I think is going to buy today. Um, but I think it's, it has a huge growth opportunity, right? It's the market cap is not too big for an insurance company and, um, their growth numbers, I believe are pretty good. I haven't looked at them in a while. I just saw the ticker in the chat. Um, so I'll definitely be pulling that up as well, but 
Uh, I traded them in the past. I, I got in around ninety dollars like a month ago. I made a little quick options trade. I got out, but this thing just keeps on moving up. All right, so there, there's the first one for our ticker time. Next one, I'm I'm calling this one out. We we have to talk about this one. P L T R. Yes, that's right. It's Palantir. There, there's no way we we cannot talk about Palantir. Um, let me pull up a three month chart on this thing. There we go. All right. So so here here's the growth run. Here's the three month chart on Palantir, guys. We we got into this one. Everybody who follows along with our live portfolio. Da 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 da. All right. Here here here's the live portfolio that we look at every single day. Uh, you'll recall we traded this thing from 10 to 15. Got stopped out in some of the volatility, and then watched the stock run to 30. Thing is at $25 right now. I want to throw this one out to the crowd. Let, let's crowdsource this one. Let's get Zinger Nation in it, guys. Nobody can sit on the sidelines. We, we've got a couple hundred people watching the stream right now. I, I, I want to see at least 100 answers in here. So, so the question is, you are forced to either buy or sell Palantir. Uh, $25 a share. One, if you're going long the stock. Two, if you're going short it. Drew, I, I've got a, a, a little special trade that I want to work up on this one. Um, as, as I'm actually going to gonna drop a trade on this stock right now. But, but Drew, get, give us your hot take while, while I get ready. Oops. I did. Um, I love Palantir, right? Peter Thiel, Elon Musk, they're twin brothers, basically, in my eyes. They're two geniuses. Um, they're really killing the game out there in the whole technology sector. They're, they're big investors, right? Um, and I think that they're going to be killing it. So, you know, Peter Thiel, he's been working on this company for a while. It's been in the works and, you know, recently public. So it's pretty interesting. Um, and they keep on picking up contracts. So I think more people are hearing about them. More people are kind of understanding. Um, they're very well known for their government contracts. But I think a lot of people would be surprised to learn that, you know, they're picking up contracts with, you know, corporations that are pretty big. Uh, a few car companies, I know Fiat Chrysler, one of them, local Detroit company. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I really can see a lot more companies coming in. But at the current valuation, it, it, it doesn't make sense. But either does Tesla, right? Those things just keep on going up. Um, it could pull back. It could skyrocket. Um, it's going to be hard to tell what's going to happen in the short term. But a few years out, I really think this could be a 10x uh, or 10 bagger, as they call them, right? So I like them. I know Luke. I know Luke likes them too. Um, not as aggressive as I am, because you know, I, I really love Peter Thiel. But I'm excited to see what trade he makes. Um, All right, let, let's yeah. bring the screen back on. Let, let, let's get my screen back up on here. And and and, and I like this stock, right? I, I like I like the company. And I like the stock. I just don't like it at this valuation, at this tw this this twenty five dollars a share. So 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 what I'm about to do here, and let, let me throw you guys a couple of zooms, is is I'm going to get synthetically long the stock by selling the puts against it. I saw somebody else in the chat uh, did this as well, so selling the twenty dollar puts on this stock. That's exactly what I'm going to do. They're they're, they're trading at seventy one cents right now. Let, let's go ahead. Let let's pull up this order ticket. Let's switch to the right account here. There we go, I think. Let's make sure that went. All right, so, so we're going to run this just, just on 10 contracts to, to get the position started. Uh, and, and we are going to be selling uh, these $20 strikes. And we're looking at January 29th. Let's send it. All right. And we are filled. So we are now long Palantir. Let's go. $20 puts on Palantir. We're short on. So, 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 so here's the move, right? So, so you, you guys will see we, we got filled on this thing at, at, at 71 cents, right? We, we sold 10 contracts. Um, so a hundred. Ah, there we go. All right. So, so we got $710 credited to the account right now. If, if Palantir is not below $20 by the end of January, that's fine. We walk away with our 710 bucks. Uh, if the price of Palantir declines, we are effectively buying the stock at $19.30 per share because we have the, 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 the $20 uh, strike on here um, with the 70 cents for the puts. So $19.30, that, that's what we will be buying the stock for. So, so if the stock does go to 15, we're, we're overpaying by $4 a share. But I am okay with that because I do like the stock. I, I do want to own it. I, I think this is going to be the company that, that takes over the world, that rules the world before everybody even knows what it is. 
Somebody's asking what, what my price target is. I think that by the end of, of 21, this thing should get to 30 bucks. Um, I, if, if it pulls back, I'm going to be in it from the puts. Uh, if, if it does get back into that, that 15 range, that 13 range, I'm going to load up even more on this, the stock. Um, so, so that's the trade in Palantir. Let's go. We're going to be checking this thing every day. Dr Drewski, thoughts on that one? I mean, I think you said it pretty perfectly. I know it was getting close to that $29 range on the top, and it kept on getting rejected. Uh, and then it looks like the third time it got rejected, it pulled all the way back down. Now it's kind of going below the 25. It looks like it's breaking down, not breaking up. So I think you, you have a nice trade, right? You're not going to be mad if you get executed. It sounds like you're actually going to be happy, which is always a good thing. And worst comes to worst, you're making $700 cash. Who can complain? Yep, it, exactly. And, and guys, so, so Drew, Drew and I did some planning before this. We, we have two more trades that we're going to be making today, right? We're, we're, doing, we're doing a three-trade day. We've got three stocks that we're adding to the live portfolio. Again, this, this is, you know, my actual holdings. We're not doing paper money. We're not just, just talking heads about these things. We're actually trading it in here with you guys. So, so we've got two more that we're going to be doing today. But before I get going on the trades, I want to actually see some likes going on this stream. Come on, guys. Because, again, the, the whole point of the show, the reason why we do this, why we spend this time together every single day, is, is to get the trade ideas flowing. I mean, I mean that's it, right? We want to educate. We want to have some fun. We want to do some sp prank phone calls and Spencer Israel. But most importantly, we, we want to get the trade ideas going. Um, somebody say, ask about the TSA volume tracker. Yeah, we need to do that today, too. Let me write that down. Um, so, so, so hit that like, the more likes we get, the bigger Zinger Nation is, the more we can crowdsource this stuff, the, 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 the bigger the community that we have going. Um, but, but Drew, I, I think that we, we've got a special guest that, that we're bringing on, but before we get to these next two trades that we're making, does that sound all right to you? Let's do it. All right. M Mr. Producer Aaron, can we bring our guest onto the stream? There we go. I'm going to get the air horns going. Guys, out of Zinger Nation, we have our first uh, uh, listener as a guest on the show. All right? The, the, the first time that we, we've actually pulled somebody out of the chat, we've talked about it, is now on the show. You, you, you'll recognize Rodrigo out in the chat. If you guys want to, to come on this thing and pitch stocks, right? Again, this is a trade idea segment. That's what we're doing. If you guys want to come on this thing and do five-minute stock pitches, I'm going to give you an email address to, to send to. It's, it's Aaron Bry at Benzinga.com. I'm going to put it in the chat. The, the, he, he, he's our, our new producer for the show. Aaron Bry at Benzinga.com. You send him an email. We will get you on the stream to do a five-minute pitch of stocks. That, that's the move right there. Okay? So, so we're, we're having some fun with this. Uh, Rodrigo, what's up, man? Welcome. You're, you're, you're in us, in, in the person. You're going to miss Rohan. Don't worry. Rohan is still going to be around. Yeah, it's, it, it's, it's great, man. It's been a long way, man. Definitely appreciate it. What you guys do as well. It's great for the community. So it's great, man, to, to be here with you guys. Hell, hell yeah. And, and, and uh, uh, how, how long have you been trading, investing for? What's your style? That sort of thing. I've been trading, well, pretty much since the crash. Um, I had some money saved up uh, from running a financial brokerage. I ran for two years, and basically, you know, when things get slow, you have to find new ways to, I guess, you know, get ahead, and the stock market never closes. So if you can understand it and you can find a good community to work with, it can, it, it can be profitable. You can make a living of it even more, you know. So um, it's a great opportunity. Everybody should should get into it. Um, but the style I use, I definitely don't like buying like Nikola's. I definitely want to buy stocks that um, are in an innovative field where they're changing strategies and they're doing something new um, through new technologies that we've not heard of. So uh, that's one of the picks actually I wanted to, to go over today. Um, all right. All right. Let's do this. I, you, you called me this morning. You, you said you have a stock to trade. It was a major YOLO stock. Uh, it, Major. It's, it's outside of, of my normal wheelhouse, right? You see me picking names like PayPal. I, we bought PayPal last <laughs> week, guys. I am so convicted in PayPal right now. Pa PayPal is, is, is falling. The market is rising, and Bitcoin is going to the fucking moon. So, so, so if you're not in PayPal yet, I think it's such a good time to buy PayPal. We'll, we'll get back to that. But all right, Rodrigo, Drew and I are going to leave the screen. We're giving you the floor. You, you Take a couple okay. minutes. P pitch us the stock. Let, let's hear it. Let's get the trade ideas going. 
Great. So uh, the company uh, stock symbol is basically a uh, COUV. You have it there, Zapco. They basically acquired um, a company called Zapco, and basically they have this technology that you can charge your EV in a couple of minutes. You can charge your phone in a couple seconds. You can charge scooters. They have real prototypes that work, and they charge in seconds. So um, basically there are 30 patents in play here, right, from Zapco. So they put in a new CEO. The CEO bought 20% of the float. The new COO said that he will focus on bringing Zapco to a senior exchange as per their release. And this is basically, we're talking about the NASDAQ. So they're going to uplist to the NASDAQ. They're specialized in EVs, but you can use it as well, the technology for uh, scooters, cell phones, power tools, you charge them in seconds and they have real prototypes, right? So instead of the electrochemical charging technology that we use today in lithium batteries, they charge by electrostatic. This is a pro uh, this is something known as supercapacitator charging. So they're based in the UK, Zapgo. The prior CEO personally was not ready to take this global. The technology is great. The new CEO is ready. He's in the process. As you know, he's uplisting to the NASDAQ. So we saw this in, in MMEDF. They are in the OTC and suddenly they're going, they're uplisting so they can get that institutional investment. So that's what they're doing as well. As far as the chart today, um, it, has a, it had a 50% retracement. Uh, it opened at 50 cents from all time highs, dropped from 50 cents to 25, closed at 30 cents yesterday. But uh, right now it's in the 30, 40 cents. Uh, I think it's basic profit taken. Uh, but uh, the joint, they have a joint venture with AS Green Cube Innovation for fast EV charging in Norway. So Zapco's grid storage will be integrated in the greater Oslo area, uh, charging EVs in minutes without the expensive infrastructure. And um, Zapco does not use minerals. So it's as All right, but here's the chart. I, I've got the chart on the screen here. Ticker is C O U V. That's Charlie Oscar. Uh, what the hell is U? Uranium Victor? I don't know. We'll have to figure out what U is. Um, all right, he, he, here's the move in this thing that, that Rodrigo was talking about. I mean, this was it went from from pennies up to to the last trade that we have here is 36 cents. Uh, umbrella, thank you. Umbrella is U. So Charlie Oscar Umbrella Victor. Nope, uniform. It is uniform. That's right. Damon is right. Totally right on that one. Let's go, Damon. All right. We're, we're throwing this one out to the chat. A unicorn. Okay. All right. We're not throwing the U out to the chat. We're throwing the voting on the ticker on the COUV that Rodrigo just picked out to the chat. Oh. Uh, uh, the the <laughs> Uranus. Okay. Neil, you meant uh, 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 one. One. Give us a one in the chat if you like this thing. G g give us a two if you don't like it. Damon, free merch. Yeah, that's right. Damon, email that, that Aaron Bry email address, and we'll get you a free, free merch. Um, but, but all right. If, if you guys like this stock, hit the one. If you don't like it, hit the two. I like that the thing is getting uplisted to the NASDAQ. That is absolutely a catalyst. It can only go to the NASDAQ if it's a dollar a share, so I don't know if they're going to do a... a a reverse split on this thing to get that share price up or, or what the deal is. Well, R Rodrigo, do you, uh, do you know how this, this thing is getting getting to that $1 a share? Yeah, so um, you're going to talk about Nikola today, and that's amazing. It's not that I, I do not like Nikola, but well, they were going to... Drew Nikola. That, that's his, his primary <laughs> life savings, actually. That's, so, oh, so, so, that's so, not a good so idea. So <laughs> Drew's trying to save up some money while he's in college right now. Um, you know, we're, we're, we're paying him $18 a day to come onto the show here with me. Uh, and he's putting all 18 of that dollars, he's trading it in for a share of Nikola every day. But, but all right, Rodrigo, keep going. So basically, Nikola was going to buy this technology from Zapco. So you can imagine Nikola's market cap was going to double or triple in billions. But we have this company with the actual technology at 60 mil market cap. So it's a steal. I mean, that's how I look at it. Nikola was going to make billions off market cap. Over, the, over this company that's worth 50, 55, 60 mil market cap right now. The, oh. I look at that and I'm like, interesting. All right, all right. So, so there we have it, guys. We, we, we have our first guest on the, or first person from Zinger Nation <laughs> on the show pitching a stock. I, I would love to do this every day, guys. So, so if you have a stock to pitch, again, email that Aaron Bry at Benzinga.com email address. We'll give you five minutes to come on, pitch your stock, get the trade ideas going. Um, 
And, and so there we have it, our, our first pitch out of Zinger Nation. Rodrigo just literally just called me out of the blue this morning to, to, to pitch me on this thing. I said, talk about it on the show. I said, you, you come on the show and talk about it. So, so I think that, that Rodrigo got a new thing going. We're, we're doing Zinger Nation stock picks now. So, so Rodrigo, thank you for hopping on with us. We, we, we got a new stock. I don't know this one. I guess most people don't know this one. It's a small stock. C-O-U-V it just started out. Ticker. Yeah, just C-O-U-V is the ticker. It just started out. So, I mean, you know, you'll hear about it later when it's $10 in the NASDAQ. So, I mean, we're just getting in early. All right. Th- there's the move. There's the pitch. Let's go, guys. Round of applause for Rodrigo. All right. Be- being the first brave soul to come out here and, and pitch a stock. Um, <laughs> Thank yeah, you, guys. I was saying he loves this idea. Yeah, I mean, I want to do this every day. I mean, what would be great is if we had so many people that, that want to pitch stocks on here out, out of our community that we could just line up four people. We, we do 15 minutes and just bam, 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 bam. And we pitch through stocks. We vote on them. I mean, that would be a blast. Well, and Luke, that's great because, look, if you, go, if you actually think about it, CNBC will never talk about these stocks because they, they cannot talk about a market cap company that is below $1 billion. So yep. they're not allowed to do that. So where are these traders going to go besides these random forums? You know, so it's good. Yep. All right. Th- thanks, man, for hopping on. That was a blast. No problem, man. Thanks, guys. Have a good day. Too. All right, Drew. It's it's back to you and I. Uh, the COUV. The chat was mixed on it. We got some ones. We got some twos. Um, you know, I I didn't load up in this thing yet. If if Rodrigo can come back and give me a here's how they're getting to that minimum one or two dollars a share, whatever it is, for them to actually be able to uplist to Nasdaq, that that'll be a turning point for me. Um, uh, and and producer Aaron, can you drop in the uh, the email address? Um, to send to if you want to come on the show. We're, we're doing this every day. That was a blast. <laughs> but, but all right, Drew, it's time for, for our stock funeral a little bit, I think. Yeah, it is. I might have to sell all this stock to, uh, to join Rodrigo in his adventure. Um, but uh, let's, let's get to the funeral. <laughs> all right. We're, we're, we're talking about the, not my favorite stock to hate. Probably my second favorite stock to hate. The, the stock that I love to hate, second most, just behind Neo, which is screwing me today, guys. Oh, fucking Neo. Uh, but all right, Drew, open us up with, with, with your Nikola. You go for it. I lagged out there for a second. All right, take it away. Talk about Nikola. <laughs> Talk about Nikola? All right, so. Um, I'm sure everyone in the chat is pretty familiar with this stock. I know when Luke started talking about it, people were, were saying I was going to go broke if I put all my money in it. Luckily, I've learned a lot of Benzinga here, so I'm not putting all my money in it. I'm not putting any money in it. Um, the company is actually up a little bit today um, off some news. Uh, I believe – I don't want to mess this up. I believe the news is actually up here. Oh, it looks like they're – they reversed to the red side since we started the show, um, probably for good reason. But it looks like the um, the price action today start off positive because of a um, upgrade. I, I can't find the article that I was looking at, um, but basically, uh, J.P. Morgan uh, in the past gave Nikola a forty five dollar price target. I tweeted that out. It looks like we got a lot of attention on that. Um, so I, I got to say, be careful about these upgrades. I don't think anyone's buying what these people are saying anymore. Um, so definitely be careful there. And it looks like, you know, this stock is going to be headed down, down, down. Um, I think we all know who Trevor Milton is. And um, he's probably going to be prisoner Milton very soon. So we'll have to see where that goes and whatnot. But I mean, this stock is probably headed more down. I honestly think it could go to five dollars. What do you think, Luke? All right, Th- this is this is the funeral of Nikola. Uh, we 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 we've made jokes about this stock for a long time, and, and we we got called out yesterday for like, okay, if you hate this thing so much, put your money where your mouth is. So 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 I'm doing it. <laughs> I I I think that that Nikola has pretty much nothing going for it, right? They're they're. Their big, uh, I think it was like a waste management partnership got backed out of. The GM partnership wasn't what we thought it would be. The, the, the company is talking about uh, their, their 2023 plans. All right. You, you have a hype-ass Momo stock, right? The, the stock 
went up in share price out of momentum and I'm like out of just just it being hype. If you need to maintain that momentum, you need to keep fueling the PR machine. You need to fuel the hype machine. I, I don't think they can be talking about what they're going to do in 2023. Nobody cares, right? People are going to take interest again in, in January 2023. That, that's my opinion. Um, you know, I, I, I want to hit this thing on the short side. I, I'm, I'm going to do it with puts. I, I'm, I'm going to go way out on it. I'm looking at leaps. I'm looking at the, the 2022s here. And I'm going almost as low as you can go. All right. We need interactive brokers to load for me. Let's let's try a little refresh there. But 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 check this out. Um, opening up the options chain here. I'm going down to five dollars. I'm going to choose, let's go to seven and a half. Right. I, I had a five dollar price target is is what we backed into. Uh, but before we made this show. Um, so, so I am buying the puts. You guys have seen me sell a lot of puts. We just sold puts earlier today, um, uh, on, on Palantir. Um, now I'm, I'm going to, to buy a contract. We're going to open the position up. Um, let, let's click over to this, this, this proper account here. We're, we're buying a seven and a half dollar strike put on Nikola for $2 and 50 cents. So we are making money, uh, a year from now, if the stock is below $5, I don't want to be in the position for that long, right? I need the stock to crack 10, and I should double my money if it does that within the next couple of months. So we're just throwing on the, the fun, small Nikola hate position. There it is. Uh, order filled. You guys have it right here. January 2022's death of Nikola. We're calling it $7.5 strike puts for $2.50. All right, Drew, and you've you've got a shorter time horizon than mine. I'm I'm looking a year out. What 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 is your shorter time horizon trade on Nikola? Yeah, I I really think this thing's going down the drain. Um, I just looked at the exact news that I was trying to talk about earlier today. A J.P. Morgan analyst said that he had some positive stuff for the end of the year uh, for Nikola, and I just don't think that's going to be happening anytime soon. Anything positive? Another supplier pulled out of Nikola like yesterday or today. And um, if they don't have any suppliers or no one's working with them, I can't see how this stock is going to keep moving up. And I think people are really going to start to realize that this thing is going down in the dumps. So I'm going to give myself a little bit more time than usual. I'm going to go out till maybe January or February, looking at the January 29 or the February 5 uh, puts. And I'm honestly looking towards the 10 to you know, thirteen dollar put range. They're pretty cheap. You know, I really could see this wow, thing. Wow, these are breaking. amazingly cheap. So, 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 just to get some context. So, so Drew's he's looking at thirty one days out, January 29th, ten dollar puts on the stock. The stock's at fifteen eighty right now. Ten dollar puts are only thirty cents. I mean, that that's pretty cheap. I mean, if I've learned one thing from my guy Hot Stocks Luke, it's when a stock goes up or when a stock drops ninety percent, it can keep dropping ninety percent. Stock's almost 80%. Yeah, it's around 80% from its highs. That's been in the last six months. So we'll see where this thing goes. All right, and my favorite Nikola hate comment out of the chat. This could be a daily segment too. Lauren Stewart in the chat <laughs> says, when the garbage company don't won't do business with you, it's rock bottom. Damn. <laughs> All right, so, so are you hitting this trade, Drew, or what? And, and give us yeah, the exact think... trade you're hitting. Yeah, so, you know, um, the stock's been moving since we started this show. It was actually green today, which is crazy. I, I thought I was going to get in at a better price. This thing keeps breaking down. Usually, I kind of like to go against the momentum, right? So, if I'm buying a put, I like to buy in a green day. If I'm buying a call, I like to buy in a red day. But, you know, who knows how much more time I got on this. I got Robinhood on my phone right now. Yes, I am a Robinhood trader for options, unfortunately. You're on the interactive brokers. The thing I love about I interactive am. brokers is you can trade literally anything. Like, like I have access to trade securities that I would think, like, think I might get sanctioned for. <laughs> <laughs> like, I could buy this, this Syrian stock, but am I going to get sanctioned? <laughs> That's why I The love only it. problem uh, with interactive brokers, they hate little kids. And unfortunately, I turned 21 in seven months. And you have to be 21 to trade options. So I got to use the little kid-friendly app, Robinhood, um, to make my options trade. So here we go. Um, Nicola, you know, January could be the month for them. I'll drop $100. Um, let's do this. $13.50 for $1.08. And, and I don't know if you guys can see that. $13.50. Um, 
January 29th, 2021. It's going to be a new year, a great year for us at Benzinga, but a horrible year for Trevor Milton and Nicola. So let's drop that cash. I'll do one contract just to get my position started. And there we go. The order did not go yet. First live trade on Benzinga, but. All right, there it is. There you have it. So, so those are the two Nikola trades. I went way out. I hit the $7.50 uh, puts, uh, and then Drew went closer. He went a month out, hit the 1350s. So, so there you have it. Um, and, and, and Drew, all right, so, so, you, so you just revealed your age. You, you, you said you're, you're 20 years old right now. How, how long have you been trading for? Let, let, let's, let's get some context in here. Yeah, so that's actually a good question. So I bought my first stock. Um, my parents, they didn't want me to buy some stocks. I made a little bit of money at SneakerCon in Detroit. No, I didn't know what to do with it. I was 15 years old. And I said, you know, I got to buy some stocks. So the first stock I bought was, you know, one of the smartest investments I've ever made, GoPro. Just kidding. One of the worst investments I've ever made in my entire <laughs> life. I was like, I love these cameras. You know, they're going to take off for the future. Little did I know the stock plummeted i mean luke i don't know if you want to pull up that graph and embarrass me in front of everyone or if you can save me some decency all right go, um, gopro is a bad one that is a bad <laughs> one my my joke always was, was that it was gopro fitbit and blue apron should all merge to create a lifestyle company you guys remember when those were like the the hot stocks that then turned to shit that that's what it was because <laughs> i was like all right blue apron is a dollar a share gopro is a dollar a share uh, Fitbit's like a dollar a share. You know, you, you, you merge them all together. You got, you know, something super bloated with debt, falling sales, but you, boom, lifestyle company. The market would eat that shit up. You do a secondary. That, that was my path forward for them. But all right, here, here's the GoPro chart. Uh, how far out should I go? Here's a five-year. Right down. And basically, I, I said, all right, why do some stocks go up? Some stocks go down. I kind of was like Dave Portnoy. I thought all stocks went up. I thought this was easy. I thought you just buy some random stocks and you make money. Um, little was I wrong. So to answer your question, that was my first stock I ever bought. I'll never forget that. And yeah. All right. So so that's yours. Um, my my mine. I'll, I'll I'll do my backstory too. So so uh, I, I'm 28 years old right now. Um, I bought my first stock in my first account when I was 13. And that was before you could actually just set up accounts online, right? Like I could open a brokerage account right now in less than four minutes. Um, but, but my dad had to take me into a Scott Trade office, a physical Scott Trade location. RIP Scott Trade doesn't exist anymore. Um, and, and, and open the account for me. And, and that, that first stock that I bought, um, or, or like, like, I don't know, within the first two years of, of me getting started buying stocks, uh, I, I believe is when 08 hit. And, and I got destroyed. O over the course of, of those first, like, I don't know, seven or eight years of trying to build a portfolio, I got blown up three times. The first time that I got blown up uh, was, was the Great Recession, right? I saw, you know, Bank of America's down 10% in a day. Hit that. It's going to rebound. Hit that. Hit that. Hit that. Bought all the way down. Just, just kept getting blown out there. Second time that I, that I got blown up. Uh, was buying these small ass biotech stocks that I warn everybody against, right? I'd read the Seeking Alpha article. It says this stock is a hundred million dollar market cap. It's going to do six hundred million dollars a year of sales. I bought all those. I think that was the one I blew up when I was like sixteen years old. Um, and then the last portfolio that I blew up was it was about eight years ago when I was sometime in college. Uh, I was buying patent trolls. That that was the like the hot thing right now, right? Like EV is hot right now. Crypto is hot right now. At that time, patent trolls were were the, were, the, were the hottest thing around. So I was buying all these patent troll stocks, and basically, you know, all all, all like the the stock twits chatter, the seeking alpha chatter was, you know, that this stock, uh, you know, has a hundred million dollar market cap. They're gonna sue Google. They're gonna own half of Google. Uh, you know, so it's a an eight hundred bagger, right? That that's like what the trade was that I got suckered into. Um, and that's actually how I found Benzinga. So, so I, I joined Benzinga eight years ago, um, you know, and it was just, just a handful of people. Um, and it was because I was in one of these patent troll stocks, and Benzinga wrote a news article about it. Uh, I then did some, some research on Benzinga, saw that it was in the Michigan area, right? I, I was going to school at University of Michigan in Ann Arbor, and just reached out to the company and said, hey, 
you know, I, I, I'm in Michigan. W would, would be nice to meet or I could stop by and say hi sometime. Um, and it, it's been like that ever since. You know, I, I started at Benzinga just writing for free because I, I loved it and I thought it was a really cool opportunity. Um, you know, and, and it's been just a, a roller coaster ride since then. Or, I mean, we, we've built this thing from just being a blog that writes about these stupid-ass patent trolls that blow up my portfolio to, to, to being a real business where, where we actually power brokerages. You know, this this year, the, the end of 2020, we started getting into video and some other cool things. And, I mean, we get 8 million people a month on our website. So so that that's my investing story. You know, we, we probably should have done this this background a little bit earlier, right? We've been doing the show for three months now. Uh, but but there you have it. There, there's Drew and I. That was a great story, Luke. Even though you lost some money on those patent troll stocks, the ROI was, you know, a lot of intrinsic and, you know, extrinsic value, it sounds like. So, yeah, there, there you glad go. Glad to hear. All right, Drew, we're, we're coming to the end of our time now. We, we have five minutes. I, I don't think that we can do a show without hitting our chat challenge. Let's go, baby. Th this is probably my favorite part of a day. I like to make fun of stocks. I, I like to rip on the Nikolas. I like to look at these stupid-ass biotech stocks that fall 80% in a day. But but uh, more importantly, I love Zinger Nation. Uh, and, and so let, let's get this chat challenge up here on the screen. This is every single week. We're asking Zinger Nation. That's all of you out there in the chat. We're asking you, uh, you know, a, a question of the week to see who has got the trading chops. This week, the question was, what is going to be the best performing Momo Momentum stock of the week? Uh, we asked this question yesterday when, when all of these stocks were, were getting hammered, right? We saw a 10% rundown in, in a lot of these names, like your Palantirs, your Lasers, all that sort of thing. Um, so that's the question that we asked. We, we also crowdsourced it and said, what should the prize be to the winner? Uh, the, the, the answer that was picked, I don't remember who picked it, um, but was uh, a share of Apple. So whoever wins this thing, we're going to figure out how to get you a share of Apple. I don't know how we do that. We might just need to cut you a check for like 170 bucks or whatever it's at. But but we'll figure that out. Um, but all right, let's pull it up. We, we asked the, these best performing Momo stock, and we, we've got a lot of, of bad answers on here. Check this out. We're, we're looking for a positive price improvement <laughs> out of almost all the answers that we've gotten. We, we, we're looking negative. We, we've got a lot of reds on here. Right? We, we've got a lot more reds than greens. Um, let's see. I think, let's see. Baba, whoever picked Baba, let's see. Christian, you're up 5.98%. We got a second Baba pick. Andre up 5.98%. Uh, you guys are in the lead, but we're going till tomorrow. We're, we're doing, we're checking in at this time tomorrow. So, so, so Andre, Christian, with their Baba picks, number one place. Let's go. Number two is Damon with NNDM. Nano Dimension, that's another chat favorite. And number three, yours truly, Luke, Hot Stocks Luke in here with his laser pickup 3.9. <laughs> all right, all right, I like that, I like that. Where's Drew? Drew's getting smoked, Ajax down 2%. But there's plenty of time. These, these stocks move like crazy. I, 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 let, let's get some buying, let's get some energy into laser. Uh, right, right now I've won one of these weeks. I've come in a lot of second places. I want to get this win in here. So come on, laser. Let's go, let's go, let's go. All right. <laughs> Christian's asking to call it early while he's ahead. Nope, not yet. So so here's here's the play, guys. I mean, you'll y'all are usually better than this. I mean, we got a lot of red picks. We got a lot of bad picks in this week. But we we've got another day. Another day to redeem yourselves. I want to see at least half of these green. I mean, usually it's it's pretty good, but but this week is is a tough one. All right, Drew. It, 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 own. It, it, what would you say? <laughs> I said that's not a portfolio I'd want to own right now with all that red in there. Yeah, that's pretty bad. It's pretty bad. We, we, we talked about doing a, a Zinger Nation portfolio where we, we do crowdsourcing and where we buy stocks in a live portfolio. But but after this week, uh, you know, maybe we're not doing that. <laughs> we might have to uh, put that on pause. Cool. I don't know. I believe right, in the, the team. What did you say? I said I believe in the Zinger Nation. I think they could build a good portfolio. Yeah, we'll see. I have we'll to check see. That out. Let, let's get some more greens on here tomorrow, and then we'll make a call. Okay. Um, <laughs> but, but all right, that that that's the move, guys. Um, 
Let, let me give you a little bit of a preview for tomorrow. We are coming to the end of our time. Again, this this is our trade idea hour that we're running. Uh, tomorrow, we're, we're going to be doing a trade on Baba. I wanted to get to it today, but running out of time. So, so I've got a trade I'm going to be putting on to Baba. Uh, we did make trades today on both Nikola and Palantir. So we'll give you guys updates on those, uh, along with some of the other recent positions, like, like, like my PayPal that I'm in love with right now. Um, we're, we're also going to be talking about Fubo tomorrow. We've got a trade that, that may or may not be going on to Fubo, depending on where the momentum slides at the end of the day today. And then, of course, uh, if anybody in Zinger Nation out there wants to come on the show and pick a stock, just like Rodrigo did, we want to have you on here. I mean, that, that was a blast. I would love if every day we had, like, five Zinger Nation people just doing two-minute stock pitches, like, bam, 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 bam. I mean, we, that will get the ideas cooking. So without further ado, guys... Hit, hit the like for me. We Hit the subscribe button. Again, we, we want to get this uh, uh, the, the ideas going. Do you go long Palantir, Bill? I sold puts on Palantir, so I'm sort of synthetically long the stock. Sold the, 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 the $20 strikes, I believe, a month out. Um, but all right, guys, that, that's the deal. I, I will talk to you all tomorrow. Happy trading. Peace.